Following my recent 40k video, YouTube recommended the critical drinkers the battle for Warhammer has begun. I want to examine some of the points raised in the video with you as I don't believe all were valid. For those of you unfamiliar with the critical drinker, he reviews and analyses modern entertainment through his sarcastic Scottish persona. He's a master legion of fans, though not without critics, and has a substantial following on YouTube. This video isn't intended as a one-way character assassination. However, I believe he has missed the mark in this particular video, which I'll link down in the description as well. But firstly, I know you'll ask, why should you listen to me, a small time YouTuber? Well, I know my stuff when it comes to this subject. In short, um, Warhammer 40,000, that is my, my jam. For those unaware, the Drinkers video focuses on Games Workshop's decision to change the custodies to include females, sparking discussion both inside and outside the 40k community. To be clear, I personally disagree with Games Workshop's approach to this change, mainly due to how it was introduced rather than the change itself. I don't think it's as law-breaking as the Drinker suggests. Just to note, I'll only be addressing specific parts of the video that I take issue with. Let's dive into the first clip. Now, there's a lot of lore surrounding the Space Marines and the Custodies themselves, how they're created and how they function, but one of the most fundamental aspects of their creation is that they're all male. Hence the reason they're all referred to as Battle Brothers. Here's where I think the drinker starts to go wrong. The requirement for male subjects in the creation of these beings in the law is only a fundamental aspect for Astartes. For an actual in-law explanation, this is because the gene seed implanted into marines are key to male hormones and genetic structure, with each chapter's gene seed being based off their respective Primarch's genetic material. As you can see from this image on screen, the creation process in the law for space means is extremely fleshed out. This is not the case for Custodes. What the drinker states does not apply to the Golden Boys. <laughs> Well, I suppose I can't call them that anymore. The idea that the creation process is compatible with males only is not supported in the law. The way in which custodies are created remains largely unclear even today. There's been no step-by-step -step process published unlike the Space Marines. In fact, the law surrounding custodies creation lacks nearly any detailed information. Also, on a minor note, custodies don't refer to each other as battle brothers. That is a term exclusively used by Astartes. Let's move on to the next clip and examine the custodies creation process a bit further. Only the strongest, toughest and most resilient individuals can even hope to survive the process of being turned into a space marine, much less a custodies. So, the drinker is quite correct when he states that only the most resilient individuals can hope to survive the process of being turned into a space marine. The trials to become an Astartes differ depending on the chapter, but many aspects have been detailed in the law, and they usually involve great feats of courage, skill and physicality, the latter part obviously heavily favouring males over females. However, we know next to nothing about the process for selecting custodies. We know candidates are selected at a younger age than space marines, they're taken in and never seen again. This is about the limit of what is in the law. The selection process might not even have anything common with the Astartes. Like we see in Captain America, his selection isn't based on strength, but his character. I am looking for qualities beyond the physical. So my point is, there is nothing in the current law that would stop females from being selected for, then created to become, a custodian guard, in part because there is so little law on the matter. The change doesn't violate any pre-existing law in this area. Let's take a look at the next clip. The problem is that Warhammer started to get popular, really popular, and so it was only a matter of time before it attracted the attention of MODERN AUDIENCES. As the drinker suggests, the Warhammer 40,000 universe is indeed experiencing a surge in popularity and, I'd add, a growing level of social acceptance, which is fantastic. From my personal observations, many of those debating the changes to custodies, whether they are for or against, are not necessarily active in the hobby itself. I would posit that most people who play 40k are more worried about how disastrous the Custodes book is from a gameplay perspective, rather than the changes to the Custodes gender. Now let's get on to female space marines. The push to make the world of 40k more diverse and inclusive has been going on for a while now, and one of the big objectives they've been gunning for is female space marines. 40k has been made more diverse recently. Games Workshop have released a new line of Imperial Guard that now include female heads. The new models though were fantastic in my opinion, and are a clear upgrade. They have also done a complete line refresh for the Sisters of Battle, a faction who are pretty popular and I think everyone agrees the new models look great. All of this was done in line with the law and felt pretty natural to me. None of it felt particularly pushed. I will address the law changes to Custodes later, 
as part of that did sort of feel forced. However, I don't think this necessarily means the next step is female space marines. There are probably a group of people who take issue with male space marines, but I doubt many of them are actually in the hobby. If the change was going to occur, then the introduction of the Primaris marines and Core would have been the perfect time to shoehorn that in. The change just wouldn't make much sense, especially now that female custodies fill the genetic engineered super soldier role. This could be some famous last words here on my part, but I see the possibility of female space marines a bit of a boogeyman, without any substance to it except to be a cat whistle to sow outrage. I just don't see it as likely. Up next, let's move on to the culture war. All that matters is winning, breaking down another barrier, homogenizing and blending everything together into an indistinguishable grey sludge of inclusion, gleefully taking another treasured thing away from their enemies so they can gloat about it and push for even greater victories next time. And a few days ago, they moved one step closer to their goal with the release of a new rulebook from Games Workshop, where it casually dropped in the fact that female custodies are now apparently a thing. I'm not sure the change to custodies was another battle in the so-called culture war, as the drinker is suggesting. For instance, Aaron Dembski Bowden, a GW Black Library author, so you would expect him to know his shit surrounding the law, provides some context, suggesting that the idea of female custodies has been circulating among creators for quite some time. The idea was stopped in Aaron's opinion initially because there were not any female custodied models. Why GW have softened their stance on this issue despite the entire line still being all male, who knows? Hopefully it's a signal that a line refresh is on the way, as they are still stuck in the pre-primaris scale and could definitely use an update. There could be any number of reasons though. It is pointless to speculate in my opinion unless we have actual information from GW. That's pretty interesting considering they've literally never been spoken about before and everything we know about them suggests that can't happen. To provide context for this clip, the drinker is discussing custodies specifically. Arguing that it can't happen from a law perspective is simply incorrect. As I've previously noted, there are no restrictions within the law preventing the creation of female custodies. However, it's important to acknowledge that this doesn't extend to space marines. I will address the literally never been spoken about before part in the next clip, so let's check it out. Naturally, fans were confused by this, and when they were questioned about it on Twitter, Games Workshop's response was simple and blunt. Since the first of the 10,000 were created, there have always been female custodians. This is where I find myself at odds with GW's change, and where I think I can see some common ground with the drinker. It is in the way in which GW introduced this change and their response on Twitter to the fans. Gaslighting people who are questioning the change was added to the discontent. The entire model line is currently all male, as I've already said. All the official artwork, of the custodies we can see at least, is, you guessed it, all male. Now I suppose you could say the female custodies are the ones with the helmets on, but that is a cop out in my opinion. The law also references custodies routinely as a brotherhood of demigods, and all the characters of the custodian guard in the law before the new codex are again all male. The always has been approach just isn't a good look for GW. The one piece of law that runs counter to this is a quote from Sanguinis' viewpoint stating, these men and women were plated in the same gold as the ship, rendered upon their bodies with painstaking artistry, my father's guardian Sanguinius thought. For me, this quote is too vague and can't justify proof of female custodies, which some people have used it for. The women referenced could quite easily be the Sisters of Silence. Certainly, it pales in comparison to the overt pieces of law that suggested custodies were all male before this, so I kind of agree when the drinker states the following. You know, I can't help thinking that you guys are trying to do a bit of rewriting of history here. Yes, they are kind of rewriting history, specifically the always has been part. As I've already discussed though, the law regarding the possibility of the creation of female custodies has not been rewritten, so I only agree with part of what the drinker is suggesting here. I also feel GW could have approached this topic a lot better. For instance, one way could have been updating the existing line of custodian guard to the new scale, and at the same time include female head options. Throw in some more fleshed out law regarding the creation process and you would be onto a winner. I think this approach would have been a lot better if GW were keen to stick to the idea of there has always been female custodies. It isn't the first time they have introduced a model with the explanation that it has always been around either. My preferred option would have been to update the cadre of ultra elite women warriors who make the enemies of mankind absolutely shit their britches, aka the Sisters of Silence, who were conveniently also supposed to operate with a custodian guard. Their models are pretty old nowadays, but they're still reasonably popular. There was a great opportunity to release a rescaled custodian guard box that has updated Sisters of Silence in the unit too, like how they operate in the lore. 
All right, enough wish listing. Let's move on to the next clip. I can't help thinking that you've finally started to bow to pressure from modern audiences, and you were almost certainly encouraged to do this by a sudden infusion of investment money from BlackRock. I'm not entirely convinced Games Workshop's recent decision are a response to pressure from BlackRock. The concept of female custodies has been floating around among GW authors for years, as hinted at by Aaron Dembski Bowden earlier. In my experience, it'd be more in character for GW to fail at the landing through incompetent communication with the community, rather than a sinister plot to subvert expectations. This next clip is where I think the drinker is most incorrect. And while certain details might have been corrected and expanded on many times over, the general setting, history, characters, rule books, and foundations of the world have actually stayed extremely consistent. I strongly disagree with the drinker's assertion that the law of Warhammer 40,000 has remained extremely consistent. It will likely see even more revisions going forward now that Games Workshop has decided to stop the 40k universe being static and progress the narrative forward. In fact, the law has undergone significant changes over the years. For examples of change, in the early editions of 40k, female space marines were indeed present, but were eventually discontinued due to poor sales. Additionally, the portrayal of Primarchs has evolved from having little concrete information to now being more extensively developed. The relationship between the Necrons and the Katarn has also undergone significant shifts over time, and let's not forget the fairly recently updated Dark Imperium novels that completely shifted around the timeline. These examples demonstrate that the lore of 40k has not been static and has experienced considerable alteration throughout its history, even recently. Over time, certain elements have gradually crystallised into more defined concepts, although this hasn't been uniformly true across all aspects of the law. Some facets are considerably more fleshed out than others, with ongoing developments still evident. I would posit that the law surrounding the creation of the Custodes isn't firmly established at this juncture, and was fair game for change. But what is law? Why should it be respected? The law is something you should respect enough to work around instead of constantly changing. Because believe it or not, people actually get invested in this stuff. They buy into the fictional world you've created, and the more you fuck with that, the more difficult you make it for those people to stay invested, because they know that at any moment, some prick might decide to completely rewrite it to suit their own selfish bullshit needs. For me, lore is the traditions and knowledge that act as a framework for which the 40k universe is based around. People do get invested in the law. I'm one of those people, and you probably too if you're still listening to this video. You can absolutely get lost in 40k as a setting. It's probably one of the most fleshed out sci-fi universes around. But the question is, when does the law matter and when does it not? 40k has certainly seen its fair share of retcons. I think the answer to this is everyone has a line and that line is subjective. For me, the line is where there is a firmly established plot point. For example, I'd consider the male-only status of space marines is now ingrained in the law and probably shouldn't be altered. Similarly, Sanguinis' demise is pivotal to the universe's structure. Resurrecting him would unravel significant aspects of the world building. However, in the case of female custodies, there's scarce, if any, law to disrupt. Introducing them doesn't necessitate a complete overhaul. It barely conflicts with the existing custodies law, so I'm not sure I agree with the drinker when he states, It's the sacrifice of artistic freedom on the altar of identity politics. This right here, boys and girls, is the thin edge of the wedge. It's the first little crack in the dam that will eventually become a gaping hole. Personally, I'm inclined to think this primarily isn't about identity politics. Instead, it seems like an idea that GW authors thought might be cool, which has gradually gained more traction over the years. As Aaron Dembski Bowden alludes, this isn't a new idea amongst GW staff. While I acknowledge its flawed execution, I believe there were better approaches available for this change. Nonetheless, I don't see this as heralding broader, sweeping changes in some culture war. Moreover, I suspect most fans are less concerned about the change itself, and more frustrated by GW's implementation, gaslighting, and how poor the new codex is from a gameplay perspective. While I doubt the drinker will come across this, I hope this video clarifies some of what I felt to be inaccurate information, and provides clarity on the existing lore. I trust it hasn't been too dull and has contributed contributed to the ongoing discourse on this topic. Certainly, I'm keen to hear your perspectives as well. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments below.